This episode contains spoilers for Thor Love and Thunder and God of War. Also, it was sponsored by BetterHelp. What is going on, mere mortals? My name is John Solo, and 2022 has been a pretty big year for the Norse god of thunder and guardian of our realm, Thor Odinson. Back in July, we saw the next chapter of his journey in the Marvel Cinematic Universe unfold in Thor Love and Thunder, and in just a few short months, we'll witness his wrath in the long-awaited PlayStation game, God of War Ragnarok. Now, these are obviously two very different franchises with two creatively distinct portrayals of the Thunder God, but these versions do have something important in common. They're both fathers. At the very end of Thor Love and Thunder, Thor adopts the daughter of his fallen adversary, Gore the God Slayer. Meanwhile, in God of War, Thor's sons, Magni and Modi, continuously hunt for our heroes, Kratos and Atreus, only to realize that a fight against them isn't so easily won. While you might be surprised to hear that both of these variants have their roots in real Norse mythology. The Thor, who was honored and worshipped by the real Norse people, had three children of his own, two sons and one daughter. And today, we're covering their complete mythology. All right, I'll be honest with you. Mimir said it best when he called Magni and Modi, what was it, worthless wankers? So take your questions, take your threats, take these two worthless wankers and piss off. And that insult carries some weight coming from the smartest man alive. Don't get me wrong, they were Aesir gods, which made them powerful, menacing combatants that had the skills and strength necessary to slaughter dangerous enemies. But if you were to paint a mental portrait using every scrap of info that we've uncovered about them in the Old Norse texts, that portrait would not only be incomplete, it would hardly have started. Yet still, Corey Barlog and the team of geniuses at Santa Monica Studios were able to use what little info we have about the brothers and feature them as fully fleshed out, believable characters in 2018's God of War, complete with strengths, weaknesses, and a complicated family history. Speaking of, let's talk about the lineage of Magni and Modi, whose names mean Mighty and Wrath, respectively. The game actually did a great job honoring their family trees. In the game and the mythology, they are both sons of Thor, but we only know Magni's mother, a giantess named Yarnsaxa. Fun fact, Yarnsaxa is also listed as one of Heimdall's nine mothers, so he and Magni are technically half-brothers, or probably less than half because of the whole nine mothers thing. We unfortunately have no record of who Modi's mom is though. She could be a Jotun, an Aesir, or maybe even one of the Vanir goddesses. Whatever the answer is, I like how Magni's mother being a giant in myth led to the game designers making him quite a bit larger in size than his brother. Another unique but potentially accurate design choice was the game versions of Magni and Modi taking after their dear old daddy and using their weapons to harness the power of lightning. Magni with his sword and Modi with his mace and shield. Full disclosure, there is no mention of the brothers having these abilities or weapons in our Old Norse resources, but it's not a far leap to assume they would be in a similar realm as Thor. Now, fans of the game will remember that Modi is often considered the lesser of Thor's two sons, but what you may not have known is that the explanation that Mimir gives for why that is is based on a real Norse myth that we've actually covered on this channel before. If you haven't heard the story of Thor's first duel, I'll give you a quick summary and buckle up because you're in for a treat. Essentially, Odin invites a Jotun named Hrunir to feast and drink in Asgard after beating the giant in a horse race. Hrunir accepts the invitation, but he's an awful guest who gets belligerent and starts threatening all of the gods. This made the Aesir pretty uncomfortable because Hrunir was a powerful stone giant who would no doubt be able to mess up at least a few of them before being taken down. But lucky for the Aesir, Thor showed up before Hrunir could act on his threats and the Thunder God had no patience for giants being anywhere near Asgard. He was about to smash Hrunir's skull with his trusty hammer Mjolnir when Hrunir challenged him to a one-on-one -on -one duel, which Thor agreed to without hesitation. A few hours later, the two megalomaniacs face off and Hrunir throws a massive whetstone at Thor who's flying through the sky. Meanwhile, Thor throws his hammer at Hrunir. The hammer easily smashes through the stone, breaking it into a hundred pieces and continues on to its destination. Hrunir's skull, which also breaks into a hundred pieces. For an instant, it seemed to the spectators that Thor's first duel was going to be a flawless victory. 
but they would be wrong. Mere moments after Mjolnir blew apart the whetstone, shrapnel blasted Thor in the face, disorienting him and impaling his skull. He fell from the sky with a mighty crash, and before he could recover himself, the overgrown corpse of his opponent fell on top of him, pinning him to the ground. Normally Thor would have no trouble pushing the giant's body off of him, but the mead he drank in preparation for the fight and the blunt force trauma to his head left him basically useless. To make matters worse, none of the Aesir who tried to help were strong enough to move Hrunir's body, even when they worked as a team. This is where Thor's son Magni comes in. He was only three days old at the time and no taller than a shrub some might say, but he easily lifted the corpse off his father which Thor repaid him for by giving him Prunier's famously fast horse, Goldfaxi. So that is the story you would find if you looked in the Skaldska Parmal chapter of the Prose Edda. But the God of War creators put an oh-so-subtle spin on the event to add some layers to Magni and Modi's relationship and to spice up the story with some good old family drama. Because according to our reanimated companion, Mimir, it wasn't just Magni who lifted the giant's body. Mimir was the only one to notice that Modi was also there and did just as much to help free his father, only he was never given any credit because Magni Magni was the blonder of the two, and all of the spectators' eyes went directly to him. And while nobody but myself was looking, they flipped over Hrunia's corpse and freed their father. Magni, being the blonder, got all the credit, and Modi remained bitter about it from that day to the end. Now I realize there are some viewers out there who absolutely despise any changes that are made to the Norse myths, but personally, I thought that was a pretty clever and original way of tying the ancient story to the game. In pretty low impact as far as Norse canon is concerned. Though I can't say the same for Magni and Modi being killed in the game because that is just not supposed to happen. See, in the original mythos, the end of the world, known as Ragnarok, is followed by a period of regeneration, and most of the gods don't live to see that regeneration. Thor is killed when the world serpent vomits poison all over him, Loki and Heimdall slaughter each other, Odin is devoured by the giant wolf Fenrir. Basically, the Aesir's entire starting lineup is completely eliminated. When the War of All Wars is over and the dust finally settles, only a few gods are left standing, and two of them are Magni and Mothi, who are said to inherit Thor's hammer. Now, to be fair, I'm pretty sure this exact scenario is prophesied in the God of War universe because when Modi sees his brother take an ax to the face, he's in complete disbelief. Not only did he think that he and his brother were immortal, he thought they would live on to inherit his father's hammer, evidenced by him stating that now everyone will only think he got it because Magni is dead. I am that fucking hammer, but now everyone's gonna think I only got it because Magni's gone. Be a joke! But as fans of the game know, Modi doesn't inherit it either. Thor takes out his rage over Magni's death on Modi and leaves him too weak to defend himself against a bloodthirsty and arrogant Atreus who casually finishes him off with a stab to the neck. That's what I said to your mother right before I gave it to her. So in this story, Kratos and Atreus seem to be disrupting certain elements of the future that Odin had foreseen. Or this apparent disruption is actually what was predicted in like most prophecies, Odin thinking he interpreted it correctly and his efforts to control and manipulate fate to his benefit are backfiring. Fate's a tricky thing, lad. And Odin's just arrogant enough to think he can get the best of it. Even if he can't prevent Ragnarok, he still hopes to learn enough details to influence the outcome. It'll be interesting to see how things play out in the next game, and I can't help but wonder who else in the Norse pantheon is going to make an appearance. Wouldn't it be crazy if Thor's daughter came into the mix to help him avenge her brothers? Because you may have forgotten, but Thor actually does have a daughter in the God of War universe, just like in the real mythology. And I'll tell you all about her after a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Modi's inferiority complex haunted him his entire life, literally up to the moment he was killed. And the sad truth is that his inability to get over it may have stemmed from his never opening up to someone about it. You see, we may not like it, but challenges are a natural part of life. We all have insecurities that weigh us down. We all have trauma. And the answer for how best to handle them is almost never obvious. I can't express enough how helpful it is to talk with someone about these things, to vent your frustrations and be given a whole new perspective for how to think about and handle them, which is why I'm such a big fan of better help. 
For the uninitiated, BetterHelp is a fantastic service that can connect you with professional and licensed therapists who wanna help you become a better problem solver. All you have to do is take a short quiz and answer a few questions about yourself, and in less than 48 hours, BetterHelp can find you a therapist that fits you best from their massive network of board-certified providers. You can also communicate with said therapist however you're most comfortable, whether that be video calls or even direct message, making it more convenient and accessible than therapy ever has been before. Whether you need to offload some stress, emotionally heal, or help with anxiety and depression, therapy can get you there, and I can help make it a little more affordable. Just go to betterhelp.com slash John Solo to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash John Solo. So the reason you haven't heard much about Thor's daughter in the almost two years we've been talking about Norse mythology is because we don't actually know a lot about her. I know I say that about a lot of Norse figures, but it's especially the case with his daughter. We know her name is Thruther, which translates to strength, and is sometimes anglicized as Thruder, the same way that Mothi is anglicized as Modi. Her mother is Thor's wife, the golden-haired earth goddess Sif, making Thruther Magni and Mothi's half-sister, and that is about everything we know for certain. This lack of real-life knowledge is reflected in the game's universe by Sindri, who briefly mentions her before being conveniently cut off by Kratos, who wants to know more about her brothers. Thor's their dad, different moms, sordid story that one, Baldur's their uncle, Odin, dear old grandpa, oh, and a sister named- Weapons. How do they fight? Clever move, developers. There is also a myth featuring Thruther, but she's not really a character, more so a prize to be won. It's a poem called Alvismal, which means the words of Allwise, and is found in the poetic Edda. In it, a dwarf named Allwise marches up to Thor's house and tells the god that he's been promised his daughter's hand in marriage, and Thor tells the dwarf he can only have her if he proves that he's wise by answering questions about what various phenomena and objects are called across the nine realms. For example, Thor asks what they call the ale that everyone drinks in every world, and Allwise correctly responds, humans call it ale, the Aesir call it beer, the Vanir call it wine, Giants call it cleansing drink, but in hell they say mead. The giant sons of Suttung call it toast. This goes on and on and on until Allwise answers every question Thor can think of, but the dwarf's victory is short-lived. Thor's real goal with this pop quiz was to keep him distracted until sunrise, which is apparently when dwarves turn to stone. Such is how bets with the Aesir usually go. There's always an unspoken second game that's being played without your knowledge. Also, I can't be the only one who noticed the similarity between this story and the chapter of The Hobbit, where Gandalf distracts the trolls until morning when the sunlight turns them to stone. Tolkien borrowed from Norse mythology in some really interesting ways, and we're going to talk more about that in next week's episode. So that may be all that we know about Thruther, but there are some pretty interesting mysteries surrounding her, like the fact that one of the Valkyries who serves the dead warrior's ale in Valhalla is also named Thruther. Could they be the same figure? I think we can all agree that being a Valkyrie and choosing which humans are worthy to go to Valhalla would be very fitting for a daughter of Thor, the guardian of Midgard. And that's a storyline that Marvel could easily use when Love, his daughter in the MCU, inevitably gets her own spin-off movie in 10 years. Because, come on, we all know that's coming. But because there are other recorded instances of completely separate figures being given the same names in Norse myth, it's just not possible for experts to confirm the theory. That, and there's just no other details to connect the two Thruthers. Another intriguing idea is that the myth I told you earlier about Thor's duel with the giant Hrunir originally started with Hrunir kidnapping Thruther instead of losing a race to Odin. There's a poem called Ragnar Strapa, where Hrunir is referred to as Thief of Thruther, and a scene of her abduction is said to be depicted on a character's shield. Now, it's definitely not uncommon for there to be more than one version of a myth, but this is the only record we have of Thruther's abduction. We haven't found any enlightening details in any other text. So it just leaves you wondering how this version would have gone down and wondering if this was just another case of Loki pulling some shenanigans. So that was literally everything we know about Magni, Mothi, and Thruther. If there were three demigod-sized holes in your heart, I'm hoping this episode of the podcast was enough to fill them. 
That's right. We're the Messed Up Origins podcast now. Haven't you heard you can also subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast platforms? Well, if you haven't done that yet, make sure you do. Links are in the description below. I'm currently in the process of porting over my remastered classic episodes on Mondays and Wednesdays, but new episodes like this one are posted every Friday. And hey, while you're off subscribing to stuff, you might as well follow Messed Up Origins on Twitter and Instagram, right? I hear that's a great way to stay updated on upcoming content and even just learn more about mythology and folklore. If you like messed up content, it's kind of a no-brainer to follow them. Word on the Bifrost is they're going to be hosting a giveaway soon too. But with that bit of bribery, I'll let you go, mere mortals. In all sincerity, thanks for stopping by today, especially if you made it all the way to the end. I'll see you all again next week with some more messed up mythology and folklore. Until then, my name is John Solo, and don't forget, John shot first. (laughs) 